from a respected biology professor to a faithful Christian. It was something he really uh, enjoyed. A model airplane enthusiast, James Miller was not a man who anyone imagined would die in a senseless murder. Many of us know about Jim's time at Goshen College, a dedicated biology professor who, by the admission of his peers, worked to make this school a destination for future doctors. As chair of the biology department, acceptance rates to med school were very high. I think that's evidence that Jim was a capable teacher. Dr. Carl Helrich just retired from Goshen College, a physics professor who worked with Jim for years. Jim was a little bit stiff. Admitting his and colleagues his struggled for humor, he remembers Jim finding jokes to tell his students that didn't always hit the mark. That doesn't say anything about his teaching ability. It's just one of, one of the fun things about Jim. You know? While he had to work on jokes, work ethic was never an issue. Carl recalls a time when he asked several science professors to work over the summer with him without pay. What faculty volunteers their time for the summer to work with students? Yeah. <laughs> Another passion, aviation. The last person to fly this aircraft was uh, Jim. R.J. Monroe is a longtime member of the Millersburg RC Modelers, a remote control aircraft club that James Miller was a part of for decades. Today, he owns Jim's old plane, out of storage now for the first time in six years. Jim was uh, an active member and a good flyer. And anytime there was work to be done, uh, Jim was there. A lot has changed since his death. The club's field moved three years ago. Drones are now becoming a part of the hobby. Technology RJ says Jim would have jumped in on. If it was technical, I think he, he would be involved with it. In fact, they flew together just a week before his death, testing new technology Jim had installed himself. He was doing things that some of us were not even attempting. His engineering scene on this starter plane. He would flip a switch. It would open the hopper with Bombay doors. We called this the candy drop aircraft. That would drop candy for kids and during events. The, the kids, of course, would go hysterical. And that was, again, this one of the sad parts that a gentle man that, that had that nature would die so violently. A gentle man who, by all accounts, was dedicated to his faith. A commitment to nonviolence is one of the most creative powers in the world a Mennonite religion that preaches nonviolence. It turns me toward the world and the causes of violence to say, how do we live our lives and how do we engage? I sat down with Pastor David Miller for a Sunday service in Elkhart. One of the areas, particularly in this country, that that conviction has come out in is uh, Sir Mennonites uh, teaching and instructing on being conscientious objectors to war. David Miller explains the core of Mennonite beliefs, living a life of service, church as a community, and turning the other cheek, taking the option of violence off the table. Fighting was not in Jim's nature. For some, the fight for justice continues. Hope remains. He deserves this. His wife deserves it. His children deserve it. And the person who did it deserves it. But as time passes, others think Jim's case may simply remain a mystery.